Hey, hey guys, alright. Today, this video, it's all about high altitude flying. I'm gonna show you the little tricks, the strategies, and everything you can use in a P47N. Usually, when you see this in a video, most tubers, they're not showing you its full capabilities. Its full capabilities kick in around about, I think about 6,000 or roughly about 6,000 and up when its supercharges are working fully okay that's when this plane turns into a beast okay if you guys are having trouble with uh, the guns uh, that's because the guns are further apart than any other wing mounted plane if you're used to 500 make it 400 if you're used to 400 make it 300 you can make 45 minutes of fuel last you the whole game if you um, uh, put your throttle down to 77 percent right now I'm gonna show you guys little tricks that you can pull on enemies right now I'm at 11,000 meters that's high but the enemy's higher so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can abuse that insane roll rate to get on the enemy 6 even if they have a high um, higher state of energy than you in this case high altitude than you then I'm gonna show you the, the insane horsepower of this plane at this altitude it's faster than a TA-152. It's faster than a Falcon Wolf D-13. It's just straight up fast. I think the only plane that can catch it is the P-47M. Now, we uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys c certain tactics and certain situations and how to get out of them and how to come on top. Right now, you can see he's clearly above me. But watch this every other plane at above 8,000 meters or 7,000 meters is a brick and you can use that roll rate to exploit bricks that's what I'm gonna do now he just gets a glancing shot on me and watch this cut throttle flaps out and a split second because because he takes so long to come back up to my altitude again after that huge split ace watch this I'm on a six and this is a plan that can outmaneuver you usually down at low altitudes so if you ever if you ever get this uh, p47 at around about 6,000 meters and up you're good you're faster than most planes and watch this one of his friendlies are gonna come in his friendlies are diving at me probably around about 8,000 or 9,000 meters watch this all I'm gonna do is straighten the plane up. I'm about to set up another another um, another kill here. So what I do, straighten straighten my plane up a little bit more. Again, look at the distance I'm gaining on him, and that's after him diving. Now, when I get when I get enough distance, I'm gonna si I'm gonna set up the whole scenario for another kill. So. Unlike the last time, this time it's that same play. He decided he's not gonna climb. He decided to follow me doing a lag pursuit. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to defuse this. Usually, a lot of players got a problem with lag pursuit. So the technique we're gonna use is we're gonna go into a high yo-yo, and then we're gonna use a rope a dope. If you don't know what what a rope a dope is, I'm just gonna show you in this video right now. So get to about 3k. Also, the web on in this plane is limited. Look, I'm gonna have the stats and all the little um, details in the description section of the video, so you guys can copy and paste it or just do whatever you want with it. Now, this is a yo-yo. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in sort of sort of in front of his gun sight. I'm gonna do a little wiggle to throw him off. And I go straight up. This is a rope dope. It is an energy trap, but it's uh, it's commonly known as a rope dope. Now it's gonna it's gonna follow me up. As soon as I pull pull those landing flaps up, I'm just gonna go even higher than him. Look at that. He's having a rough time, and all I have to do is just get above him and just roll over. Even at 150 kilometers per hour. 
the roll rate in this thing is insane. Remember, below 6,000 meters, every, practically everything else is faster than you. Okay? So remember that. So make sure you don't overshoot. And right now, all, all I gotta do is stay behind him. Remember, in a dive, I do have the high, high diving ability. But as far as consistent speed goes, the BF-109 G2 has it. Now, if you guys ever get someone on your six o'clock, I'm going at the end of this video. I'm going to show you how to how to get someone off of your six o'clock. No, notice I'm I'm, I'm not doing um, I'm not pushing my throttle. I don't I don't really need to. Coming out of a dive, I'm, I know I got more than enough speed to catch him. It just I just have to manage it. So don't ever rush just because someone's in in front of you. Experienced players, if you if they see you rushing, they know how to make you overshoot. So he's trying to ble bleed off of me off his six o'clock. I just maintain enough um, energy just to be in a six o'clock and he goes to the drink. Now this player was, he was a little bit smarter than the other guy because he didn't follow me up. So what I did was I started baiting him, baiting him, baiting him to the point that he finally got in my traps. You're going to see the mistakes I'm going to make. So hope you don't make them. And here we go again. Hi yo-yo. And we're going to go and merge with them. Notice the asterisk. He made the asterisk in front of his name. That means he's a console player. Now, because he's he's slightly above me, that's fine. So I just go into a vertical, straight up. I go to my landing already, even though I'm not nowhere near um, 200 uh, kilometers per hour. Now this is where I make my mistake. Right here. <laughs> I rolled the wrong way. But look. Now this is where he's decided to bait me lower. So, so if you guys, if you guys ever get into a situation like this, just don't go low with them. Just stay at your altitude. Keep your speed fast. I'm, I decided I'm not even gonna wait because I already know what he's trying to do. So I'm trying to bait him up. Remember, bait him up, bait the enemy player up. One of the tricks that I do is I dive from about eight thousand or nine thousand. I dive to 6,000, but I shallow climb. What it does is it tricks the enemy into thinking you don't have energy when, but when you got more than enough to get up to altitude to fight them. Now right here, he he tries to bait me, and he goes the other way. So I try to bait him, and I I just frustrated him to the point that he ended up chasing this. Remember, make the enemy chase you. Like if you go chasing the enemy, they're most most likely going to lead you into their friendlies. So once again, all I'm all I'm all I'm doing is remember high yo yo merge, then a vertical maneuver. Remember that high yo yo merge vertical maneuver. So now now that you guys understand that. You guys can do something at high altitudes if you if you guys ever ended up fighting up here.
Now this time I'm gonna go take him to a massive corkscrew because I don't want to be doing the same thing like three, four times. Now, this time he is not used to what I am doing right now. This time he decided to keep coming up instead of diving down and this is where he made his mistake. He tries, he tries, he tries his best to um, get out, get out of this, but it's too late. I get a critical on him, I don't kill him. I get a critical on him, but I leave him. Remember, he's a console player, he's going to have a very hard time landing uh, damaged planes, unless if they are experienced. But a lot of console players, if they got damaged planes, aile ailerons, elevator damage, they usually have a hard time landing. I think it took me about four or five minutes and I finally get that kill. <laughs> now, after that, I, I go towards A, I suss it out, I started honing down on uh, the three enemy players that's left. There's two at, um, there's two landing, and, um, there's one that, that I saw my AAA f uh, firing at. I know they're th all three down here, but notice how I take my time. I'm not rushing in, I'm just taking my time. As soon as I saw that third one, I knew where the other two was. The other two was at base. So I just take my time. And then, I the way I looked at it, which one's the more dangerous? Now, uh, because they were hitting ground targets, I knew one of them was a G-55, I knew one of the other ones was fuck for 190. The more dangerous plane is the G-55, then the fuck for 190, just because it can catch me. The TA-154, not so much. Look, it's a heavy at the end of the It can roll well, but it's, it's still a heavy. The fuck for 190 is on base. G-55 is diving at... Look, I'm doing 700, 600, almost 800. He's, I'm not going to register on his radar anytime soon. But no, notice, right after that kill, I don't go go doing some crazy, you know, high G maneuver. I keep that speed up and I observe. If US players can observe rather than react, that'll go a long way in actually helping the team win. If they can just simply observe. Now remember, when you're at low altitude, you get, you can get jumped on. So in the last clip, I'm going to show you what to do if you ever get jumped on. But right now, all I'm doing is taking my time. Now, here we go. Alright, one of the biggest things, if you're in a situation like this, one of the things that you need to look at is who's pointing their nose up. Whoever's doing that is the one that's losing energy. That's your priority. If, if they got low energy, they're an easier kill. Okay? So, and right now that TA-154 is, is thirsty. And no. Yeah. But notice, I'm just taking my time. I notice the Focable 190, he's he's more concerned about getting ground kills than get killing me. And by the time he finally does come after me, it's just too late. He's too far away from his base and he didn't help his teammates enough. And <laughs> and what what the sad thing about about all this is it takes me like five minutes to kill him. <laughs> but on the la on the end of this video, I am going to show you guys how to get away from a very sticky situation when you're at low altitudes, and clearly the en enemy is far superior plane than you. Remember, every plane got a um, weakness, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how to exploit it. 
I have played this game for five years, and yeah, that's my aim. Five years of playing War Thunder. So I finally get, I wouldn't say lucky, but he sort of <laughs> stalled out in front of me, finally. Now. So, hope you guys understood the high altitude tactics, strategies that are used, and the especially the maneuvers and the capabilities, the roll rate and the engine power of this plane to actually use it, you know, in those situations. So, I'm going to be putting out a teamwork version of the P-47 soon, and it's like, when we played the P-47s back in the day, we had like 30 win game, 30 wins in a row. And we used to do that all the time. Anyways, alright, let's get into a situation where we're in a lower altitude. Alright? Okay, there's a C205, I think. Yep, it's a C205 diving on me. Notice my speed. Now, remember, if most planes, when they're diving, they are going to compress. That The only plane that won't compress is the... Um, P-51 D-30s, D-20s, but no, watch this, all I'm doing is going left and right, really, but I'm going to show you what I do at the end, which makes all the difference. As soon as he overshoots me, I'm going to pitch my nose up, and that's going to deny him uh, to uh, go and boom and zoom me. Pitch my nose up, he realizes that, so he dives down. Now I'm on his 6 o'clock, but that F4U ended up taking him out, and I ended up taking out the BF-109. So I hope you guys enjoy the gameplay.